Hello, and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today, we're going to be talking about matchings in graphs. So a matching of a graph consisting of a vertex set V and an edge set E is a subset M of the edge set. So you pick some subset of the edges such that no two edges in M share a common vertex. So a matching can be thought of as a way of pairing off some of the vertices using the edges in a one-to-one -one way. So for instance, in this matching, this vertex is matched to that vertex, and this vertex is matched to that vertex because we chose those two edges. But we couldn't have chosen, say, this edge as well, because then it would share a vertex with this edge. It would also share a vertex with that edge. Here's another example of a matching of size three. So here's a, uh, an edge over here on this side of the triangle and then two other edges here. These three also don't um, share any common vertices. In this matching, every vertex is matched with another vertex. And in this one, it's not. So let's talk about finding somehow the biggest possible matching. The, the overall goal is to find a perfect matching where every vertex is, is matched with another one, but that's not always possible. And let's see how we can find, you know, in the case that it's not even the biggest possible matching and, and how to construct such a matching. So there's two kinds of different notions of biggest. There's maximal and maximum. And there, it's a subtle difference, but a maximal matching is a matching that isn't contained in any larger matching. In other words, no edge can be legally added. Here's an example of a matching, the one that we had before with two edges, where you actually can't add another edge into this matching. If I tried to add this one or this black edge or this black edge, if I tried to, to turn those red, those all overlap with something that's already red. They all share a vertex with an edge that's already in the matching. So you can't extend it. So this is a maximal matching. But it's not maximum. Maximum means that it's the largest possible size. And we saw on the previous page that we have a matching of size three. If you take these three edges, they share no common vertices. So that is a matching. So here's a maximal matching that's not maximum. And so it's a, it's a slightly different notion in each case. Now, every maximum matching is certainly maximal. I can't extend this with by adding any more edges to the collection of red colored edges um, to form another matching, but they are different notions. So how do we find maximal matchings? So maximal is a little easier to find than maximum. In fact, you can just do the greedy algorithm for finding a maximal matching, starting with a uh, some, some graph. You can just choose any edge and then choose another edge that's not connected to that edge, like this edge, and keep going until you can't do that anymore. Then by the definition of maximal, since you can't add another edge anymore, um, that what you end up with will be maximal. Now, that's not exactly something you can program from a computer to do, though. If you want to program a computer to do this, you need to tell it what edge to pick first and what edge to pick second with this greedy algorithm. It, you can't just say, hey, computer, pick an edge. Um, so what we do instead is we number the vertices in some way. So that, uh, so number them one through n, one through six in this case. And you can tell the computer as your first edge that you pick in the greedy algorithm, choose the edge adjacent to the smallest numbered vertex one, and then that's connected to the smallest possible vertex after that. And so then the next edge, you know, we couldn't pick anything adjacent to three that would overlap. So you keep searching, you look at things adjacent to four, and four and five would be the next edge you pick. So this would be the matching that you get via that greedy algorithm by just always going for the lowest possible numbers. But you notice if we relabeled the numbers in some way, the greedy algorithm would even give you a different maximal matching. Like if I did one, two, three in this labeling, then I'd match one and two first, and then three and four, and then five and six. And so the greedy algorithm can even lead to different results, but it always leads to some maximal matching. Now, you can use the maximal matchings to find maximum matchings. There's an algorithm for doing this, and we're not going to cover the entire algorithm, but the idea behind all these algorithms is an augmenting path. So an augmenting path is a sequence of edges that is uh, in the graph that is either not in the matching or in the matching. So out, in, out, in, out. It can continue after that. An augmenting path starts at a vertex A and ends at a vertex B that are unmatched. And then you, and then to use this augmenting path to make a bigger matching, you just switch which are the black edges and which are the red edges, and that'll increase the size of the matching by one. So let's do an example of finding an augmenting path in this maximal matching here in order to find a larger max matching. Here we have a matching of size two, 
And we can, we can find a augmenting path by, again, starting with some unmatched vertex and going through a path that ends in an unmatched vertex that alternates black and red edges. So let's start at the three, that's unmatched. We can then go up to the one, which goes to the two. So we're going black, red, let's do black, red, and then black. And that would be a nice augmenting path. I could have made it shorter as well. I could have done three, one, two, six. That's just a shorter example of an augmenting path. But let's take this longer one, three, one, two, four, five, six. Now we alternate which ones are black and which ones are red. So um, we change the, the black ones to red here on this side and the red ones to black. So now we have red, black, red, black, red instead. And voila, we've ended up with a matching of one larger size. So that's how augmenting paths can be used to take a maximal matching that isn't maximum and extend it by uh, one edge to make it, make it larger, to enlarge in the max matching. And hopefully if you continue doing this, then you would end up with a maximum matching. So that's the power of augmenting paths to solve this, this difficult problem of finding a maximum matching. And now we're gonna look at a very specific case where there's a famous theorem about when a maximum matching, uh, sort of a matching of the right size that you would expect exists. And that is finding matchings in bipartite graphs. And the theorem is called Hall's marriage theorem that we're gonna talk about today. So let's look at an example of where Hall's marriage theorem comes into play. Say you have four people, M, N, O, and P, and they walk into a bicycle shop and there's five bikes available. There's the red, purple, green, uh, I guess, light purple and um, yellow bicycles. And the, the edges say which people like which bikes. So M likes red and green and N likes red and green and so on. And the question is, can each person buy a different bicycle that day so that everyone ends up with a bicycle that they, let, that they all like? So let's look at these preferences. So here, you know, M has two possible choices, N has two possible choices. It might not, not always be possible. For instance, if they all wanted the, only the red bike, you wouldn't be able to find a matching. Um, but let's try to match these people with bikes that they like. So let's try to match M with the red maybe, and then N with green. O has a lot of bikes that they like. So um, let's match them to light purple. And uh-oh. P is stuck. Notice P only likes the green bike. So um, P is, is too specific there. Maybe there was a way though that we could have shuffled around what we chose for M, N, and O so that P would be happy. It's not clear. So Hall's marriage theorem tells us exactly when we can do this. So here's how we state Hall's marriage theorem. We first need to define the neighborhood of a subset of a graph. So when you have a subset of vertices in the graph, so you have an X is just a set of vertices, and so you may imagine this is part of some graph where there's more vertices and edges out here and the, the vertices in X might be connected to some other vertices here. The neighborhood of X is defined to be the set of all vertices that are adjacent by an edge to some element of X. So if they're connected to X by an edge, they're in the neighborhood. So maybe there's other vertices out here even that aren't in the neighborhood, you know, this one is not in the neighborhood because it's not connected directly by an edge to a point of X, but ever, all these other vertices that I drew are in NG of X, the neighborhood of X. So then Hall's marriage theorem says that if you have a bipartite graph, just like the bikes and the um, people, the people and the bikes, you have a bipartite graph with left set L, right set R, and the size of L is less than or equal to the size of R, then that has a matching of maximal possible size, uh, size of L, meaning every person in this case can be matched with a bike. Um, that's a, and that will be definitely a max, maximal, maximum matching because you, you can only use, um, you can only match things between the left and the right set. So once you've saturated L, you're done. Um, so it has a matching of size, size of L if and only if every neighborhood is always bigger than the subset you're looking at. So for every subset X here of people, we wanna check that, that if the neighborhood of that subset is bigger than the set that we started with over here. That's the condition for Hall's marriage theorem. But it turns out that this graph doesn't satisfy that condition for Hall's marriage theorem. So if you take the set M, N, and P, that's X, let's look at the neighborhood of X, all the vertices that are adjacent to one of M, N, or P. So the red and the green 
uh, vertices are the only ones that are uh, that share an edge with MN and P. And so the neighborhood is just red and green. Well, the size of the neighborhood is less than the size of X. And that's not what we need for Hall's marriage theorem. Hall's marriage theorem says that the neighborhood has to have size at least the size of X for every possible subset of the people. And so this violates Hall's marriage theorem. In fact, you can even see by the pigeonhole principle now, you can't match M, N, and P with the red and green bikes because there's not enough bikes to go around. Two people will have to share the same bike and that's no good. So, um, so, th so this graph does not have a matching. And so uh, it doesn't have a matching in which every person can have a bike at least. It has some matchings, but they're not uh, size four. So to find a, a matching of size four here, we could add an edge. Maybe person P says, okay, well, maybe I could like the yellow bicycle as well. And so, uh, oh, and I think I, when I wrote this, it was orange in my mind. So if person P also likes the orange bicycle, well, now that fixes this neighborhood. This neighborhood now has size three. And if you check, every other subset also um, likes a neighborhood that is bigger than that subset. And indeed, we can now find a matching. If P gets the yellow bike and O gets the purple and N gets the green and M gets the red, then everybody's happy and everybody walks out the store with a bike that they like. So now you try. Is the following matching that's drawn here, is it maximal? Is it maximum? And can you make it bigger using an augmenting path? So you might want to test this with Hall's marriage theorem or just try to find an augmenting path and see if you can do it. Okay, so that's all for today and we'll see you next time.